Hello everyone, my name is Deniz Becher. I'm the founder and the director of Tanzanis Vienna Art Book and Zin Fair. So as you know, um, yesterday Tanzanis Vienna started. So you can visit tanzanis.com to see five different virtual art book and zine exhibitions. And today there was the talk of Irma Boon. And now Paula will be with us and she will be making a presentation about her publication. So Paula, welcome again. Thank you, Dennis. House of Common Affairs, or HOKA for short, is a London-based publishing imprint and a journal of the same name. It is the research and development department of Middlegate Studio that specializes in graphic design and strategy. HOKA questions designs and architecture's relationship with current affairs from different professional perspectives. This is to help establish it in cultural discourse. This evening, I will talk to you about the thinking behind the second issue of Hoka, which is the white one. Uh, I won't take too much of your time. It should only take about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. At the end of the talk, there will be a discount code available for this issue. And if you have any questions, please type them in the chat and I will try to answer at the end of this talk. Perfect. So uh, I will quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Paula Binogate. I founded the House of Common Affairs four years ago. Uh, I edit the journal and I'm also a graphic designer. I specialize in visual communication for the cultural and the built environment sectors. I was born in Arogala, Lithuania, and I have been a proud Londoner for the past 17 years. Now onto the subject. Hawker Journal 2 highlights the value of design and architecture. It is the first and only publication about artistic journalism or designalism, as it can sometimes be referred to. There are, these are academic terms that encompass critical design, speculative design, investigative design, and similar practices that question the status quo. Hawker in general is an international project. We believe that insight and critique can, that come from a variety of backgrounds allows a rounded look at issues instead of looking at things from only one angle. For example, up until now, I managed to convince about a third of people who are non-European, non-Western to take part in our various outcomes. The aim is to have at least 50% for both categories going forward. Diversity is important for Hocker because art, architecture and graphic design can be agents of discourse. But what difference does discourse make? Well, for example, in 1970s, Britain, Britain, in Britain, uh, most popular newspapers were pro-European. And so the country voted to join the European Union. Uh, in 2016, most popular British newspapers were against the EU and the public voted for Brexit. It could be argued that these newspapers are popular because most people who read newspapers hold certain views. However, it is worth noting that tabloids such as these masquerade as apolitical and people buy them for entertainment. Political messages get mixed in with news and gossip and then the readers keep those ideas alive by discussing them with friends and family. Buy them for entertainment. In 1970, Lithuania, Russian imperialists ordered to eradicate Lithuanian language and culture. So Lithuanians oh. illegally published and distributed their own books. Over time, this united Lithuanians to form a resistance strong enough to fight off the Russian Empire and become an independent country once again. Uh, critical speculative design, a big part of designalism, is about questioning the status quo, with the aim being public discourse about certain issues. Critical speculative designers were strongly influenced by radical architecture from the 1960s. Uh, for example, Archigram formed in 1961 and were inspired by sci-fi literature. 
they designed impossible buildings. Um, Archizoom, formed in 1964 to disrupt any attempt at good taste in middle class homes. They wanted to take the consumerist impulses of modernism to an absurd extreme and created drawings, photos, books, and exhibitions. Super Studio formed in 1966. They created plans for structures that could never be built. Back then, architecture was moving in a more conceptual direction. TLP office, which is featured, a featured practice in Hokkaido, formed in 1970 to question architecture and urban design, as well as their position and duty in a global society. Their aim is to reduce the spatial impact of building and to build less. Fiction can be a tool for analyzing contemporary urban culture. Designing fictitious artifacts such as unbuildable structures ignites the imagination and it makes it easier to discuss the issues presented. Radical architecture also influenced famous architects such as Rem Kohlhaas, Zaha Hadid and many more. How, however, they did build their radical visions that is sometimes referred to as post-critical design. A more recent and specific example is the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, who unveiled plans for a hundred mile belt of zero energy walkable communities that looks like one of Super Studio's photo montages. One of the original members of Super Studio commented on it saying that, seeing the dystopias of your own imagination being created is not the best thing you could wish for. Super Studio's work is often taken out of context. However, the wonderful and horrible thing with images is that they are able to generate meaning without context. The complaint that images are taken out of context is not valid. It is to miss what is most powerful about them, their capacity to generate meaning and not merely transmit it. In Hokkaido, some of the featured practitioners speculate to criticize. For example, I interviewed Alexander Finlay, an architectural designer from North England about his critical speculative design project, Schrodinger City. He uses architecture and image making to criticize Brexit. Some practitioners in Hokkaido speculate about solutions. Yining Gao, an architectural designer from China, explains her project Lasting Glow. She used newspaper archives and architectural proposals to propose a more sensible way to treat an old outdated building. Hokkaido shows how design and architecture can positively contribute to society. Architecture that's not for building has found a meaningful purpose and contribution to society. For example, Amnesty International commissions architects to help them provide evidence to courts as well as for public information. Therefore, this latest issue of HOKA showcases projects by practitioners who give a voice to the oppressed. For example, Situ used architectural tools and methods to explain spatiality to the general public in the context of tear gas misuse by governments. The research was published online. And this is becoming more common. The New York Times also started to use similar ways to communicate about stories. For example, they used 3D modeling and floor plans to explain the murder of Breonna Taylor to the public. This way of using architectural knowledge can have quite an impact. For example, when Alison Killing was able to uncover labor camps in China using an architectural approach to journalistic research. Hokkaido also challenges existing assumptions. For example, architectural designer from Italy, Francesca Rauser, talks about how architecture can be used to explore notions of queerness. 
browser does this while also addressing important issues. Like gentrification in London is wiping out LGBT plus menus. Hopa 2 is designed to aid critical thinking. The layout and editorial design allows for flexibility in terms of reading experience. As the reader can play around with the two halves of the journal, comparing and contrasting the content if they like, or even take the entire publication apart altogether. Future practitioners from Hoka 2 are self-reflexive. They reflect on their work while also reflecting on wider themes in the issue. This quote in particular is quite interesting to me uh, from this one from Fernanda, Fernanda Canales. Buildings are constantly being judged from just a couple of images and research too is becoming placed in a two-dimensional reading. Canales pointed out that research especially is now based more on data, statistics, and everything you can find and do on a desktop, and less with the architectural works themselves less with the understanding, the context of the works, the space and the relation with the body. For example, Scottish architect James Dixon talks about how commercial architects can strive for sustainability and how they can appropriately respond to what is happening in the world. Hawker 2 is down to earth because it speaks in first person and is made up of conversations between people. The concerns that are usually associated with academia are made more accessible by only publishing research that is explained simply instead of using academic language. It is the only publication about this niche but popular practice. It is not just the first but the only printed journal on artistic journalism or designalism. Hockerty <laughs> was produced sustainably using producers who officially strive to have minimal impact on the environment. The packaging is recycled and carbon neutral. The paper use was already stored in the UK and it was printed in the UK and shipped using carbon neutral delivery services. So, in summary, this issue questions architectural research, architectural research and design. It covers how architecture can relate to journalism and it investigates the value of visual representation through a contemporary lens. Titled Cloister Fuck, a combination of the architectural term cloister, meaning a type of covered walk and the term clusterfuck, which means a disastrously mishandled situation. This is to signify where and when Hokkaidu was published, which is in the UK during the COVID-19 pandemic at the end of the transition period. So thank you for listening. This is the end of my talk. Uh, you can get a free shipping on Hokkaidu using discount code FANZINUS, and which works until tomorrow. Um, all House of Common Affairs publications are available on hawker.bigcartel.com. Thank you to the fanzines team for having me. Uh, the virtual exhibition and the program of events looks terrific, so I urge you all to check it out if you haven't already. Uh, and now I will try to see if you have any questions um, that I could answer. Thank you very much, Paula, for your presentation. It was pretty nice to listen to your presentation about the publications. So I really like how they look, how they have some special structure as typography. And even that typographical understanding was bringing some architectural aesthetic for me. So this is uh, what I saw on that publication. So thank you very much. <laughs>